Today we have a Game Boy Advance SP that's already in a state of disassembly due to a previous repair attempt. The individual I received this unit from reported that it was a bad charging connector needing to be replaced, and that everything else was working normally. They even provided the new part. How nice. A quick inspection reveals the current charging connector is indeed not going to be functional due to visible damage on the charging side as well as the soldered connections. It looks like someone attempted to remove this connector at one point and then decided it wasn't going to happen and gave up. There's not much yet we can test with the charger due to the connector damage, but we can at least see whether the SP turns on by loosely attaching the battery and hitting the power switch. We have a green light which means the handheld is receiving power when connected to the battery, so no issue there. Due to the obvious damage on the charging connector, it seems sensible to start here and just replace it with the new part. For parts like this with multiple connections, a hot air rework station is ideal, but if you're like me and don't have that equipment, I like to use a regular soldering iron with low melt solder, which I'll put some info about down in the video description. Basically we apply a generous amount to alloy with the existing solder, and it allows each joint to remain in a liquid state for a far longer period of time after heat is applied. Once we have the new solder on each joint, we can quickly reheat all of them and push the connector out. Now we have a mess of solder that can be cleaned up with a combination of a sucker tool, a flux pen, and a copper braid. Following this, we can remove flux residue with a toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol. And at this point, I'm going to say things are clean enough to move ahead with the new connector. Speaking of that, we do need to bend these pins so that they properly align with the pads on the circuit board. This is a pretty tedious process, and I use a tweezers and a side cutter to bend and trim until things are just so and land appropriately on the pads while not having the pins shorting out with one another. Here's a quick close-up view of the formed connector and what it looks like landing on the board. To solder this in place, I start by tacking one pin near the center and then flipping the board over and making the two shield joints so that I know the connector body is now strongly held in place. Then I flip it over again and make the remaining solder connections. Follow that up by cleaning with alcohol and here's what the finished solder joints look like. Now that we have a new connector, if it really was that simple, I should be able to plug in the charger and get that sweet orange light of charging success. It was not that simple. So now we gotta look a little deeper and my first suspicion is this charging filter chip labeled EM8. To get a closer look at that, we'll head under the microscope and do a few basic electrical tests. So the first thing we'll do is check continuity on all four legs starting with the lower right, then the lower left, then just above it, and lastly the upper right leg. So everything looked good there, but now I'll switch to resistance mode and check the filter chip itself. We should have some resistance between the left and right leg pairs. The right pair is measuring open, which is not a good sign. And the same thing with the left pair. So I think it's confirmed that this chip is completely blown. So now the plan, as a temporary fix, is to bypass the chip completely. And I'll do that by shorting out these disconnected pad pairs with fine wire. What I have on hand is 36 gauge. I start by tinning all the vias I'm intending to connect to, and adding flux when necessary to promote wetting of the solder. I start with a long wire to make both connections and then trim it afterward. These solder joints do not need to be beautiful because they are just temporary, but when all is said and done, this is what the bypass looks like. We'll check with the meter to make sure only the intended connections were made and then do our functional test by plugging in the charger. Oh my, that is our orange light of charging success. So it's fully confirmed that the EM8 chip on this unit is bad, and our next step is to replace it with a good one. I ordered the new part, which for me will take about two weeks to arrive, but for you will be like half a second. I have the new part, and I got two of them just in case we mess anything up. We first need to remove the damaged chip, and we'll start by removing the temporary wires. Then we'll use low melt solder to more efficiently remove the damaged part, just like we did with the charging port. After the bad chip is off, we'll use the copper braid again to help soak up the excess solder and then clean with alcohol so we have fresh pads to work with. This part has a flip chip termination style as opposed to a wraparound, meaning the pads are only on the bottom and we have no sidewalls to solder against, and doing this with a regular iron is tricky or even ill-advised. But I'm going to try and make it work. And I'm glad I got a spare part because my first attempt did not go well. 
I just could not get the heat concentrated on the bottom pads well enough to make all four connections, and eventually I damaged the chip, so I had to remove it and start again. I'll save you the 50 minutes I spent failing here and show you the next technique I tried which actually worked. My idea was to pre-tin the chip itself with solder blobs that bulge out just enough to provide little sidewalls for me to be able to hit with the iron, and hopefully get enough heat transfer to make a stable connection. I should point out like I did for the charging port, and it's even more true here, that the proper tool for installing this is a hot air rework station. Again, I don't have one, and sometimes you gotta make do with what you've got. With this new approach, we were able to make all four connections, and a quick continuity check with the meter verifies that things should be good to go. So we'll attach the battery and quickly check that it still turns on. Green light is a good sign, so now let's try the charger. And there we go! That orange light is music to my eyes. So let's get it all put together and do our final checks on this thing. It turns on, reads games, sound and buttons all appear to be working normally. And most important of all, we can charge it now. I'm so glad we were able to get this one fixed and I sincerely hope this video can help you out. That's all everyone, kind of an abrupt ending, but it's fixed, there's nothing else. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.